largest manufacturer of typewriters and makers of data processing equipment presents Joan Caulfield. Clean and shiny, practically for nothing. I'm not interested in your land. Nine dollars, but that is my final price. I told you I'm not interested. Eight dollars, but that is as low as I go. No. Seven dollars, but I am losing money. Don't you understand? I am not interested in your land. I don't like it. I don't want it. I wouldn't have it. Two dollars. I'll take it. Oh, well, it was a good buy with the genie or without. If I had held out, how much could I have gotten that land for? Fifty cents. Fifty cents. Oh. It's all clear profit. I steal them. Oh, oh, well, now look, we don't want your land even at a bargain. I make steal. joke, make joke, funny, funny. <laughs> Hey, listen, listen, I want to tell you. Uh, oh, oh, isn't that Patty Lewis that was with us on the boat? Oh, it is. Oh, well. Hi, Patty. Oh, hi, Sally. Mrs. Banford. We didn't happen to run into you by accident. We saw your tears. Oh, th there's nothing wrong. I was just sitting here watching the sights and the excitement and the color and... I'm scared stiff. Sweet, sweet Uncle Chips. Sweet. Hey, I'll give you 50 cents for a handkerchief. Don't ask for a penny more. 50 cents, that's it. Imported domestic handkerchiefs, 10 cents. Handkerchiefs, 5 cents. Well, why were you crying? What was the matter? Oh, I've done a foolish, silly thing, but I love him. With all my heart, I love him. Who's him? Abu Ben Abik. I started corresponding with him about a year ago through a box number in a newspaper. New York's a big city, and, and I was lonesome. Living in the desert, he was lonesome, too. And, oh, his letters were so beautiful, and, and his thoughts so, so noble. Well, he's the son of a sheik, you know. And did he, um, did he promise to uh, love you until the stars fell out of the skies and the uh, sands of the desert ran cold? Mrs. Bedford. Uh, well, uh, well, I mean, older women get uh, lonesome, too. You know, I corresponded once with rather a um, you know, romantic stranger. We met eventually at his trial. Uh, I think he ran out of sand. <laughs> Patty, what does this Abu look like? Well, we agreed never to send pictures to each other. We wanted to save the excitement of seeing each other for our first meeting. He could be old and fat. Mm, with a big floppy beard. And a dirty burnous. And a, a second-hand camel. And a 50 wives with a few sweethearts on the side. Yes. <laughs> and uh, you know these uh, Arabs have it pretty good. <laughs> oh, Abu's nothing like that. He's very handsome, and he's 20 years old, and I believe him. And you're leaving. Mrs. Banford, you put Patty in a cab, and if your Abu shows up, I'll tell him he can call on you at the Excelsior Hotel in the company of two chaperones. <laughs> and if he's on the level, he won't mind at all. Uh, come on, dear, I want to hurry back and see what he looks like. Dates. <laughs> souvenirs, dates, trinkets, souvenirs. Go away. I have a heart. I have a conscience. This time I let you cheat me. Most beautiful gloves, 25 cents. 
You've just made a sale. These are exactly like the gloves I've been wearing. I paid five dollars for them. I'll show you. Miss Patty Lewis. Abu waits in the desert, a short ride from here. Oh, he was supposed to meet me here. The plans have been changed. We are to bring you to him. <laughs> oh, no, you don't. I'm staying right here in this very spot. If Abu wants to see me, he comes here. Apologies for the manner in which you were brought here. We were told to bring you and we obey orders. I will notify Abu of your arrival. Oh, that camel. Not a bit of padding in his hump. <laughs> I want to go home. Have some grapes. Oh, yeah. Welcome, my darling Patty. Let me crush you in my strong young arms. No. Let me crush you in my strong young... Let me crush you in my strong young arms. Welcome, my darling... Uncle Salahadeen. Welcome. But your inspection of the oil wells was to take another two weeks yet. Who were you welcoming? Well, uh, no one. Someone. The girl you sent for is in her tent. She brought an older woman along. So, some friends dropped in unexpectedly. Talk. Uncle, this is a private matter. Talk! Yes, sir. Oh, oh Mrs. Banford, I'm sorry. I don't know what possessed me. Here we are in this hot oven of a desert. Well, the temperature must be at least, at least 120 degrees and... Say, I'll bet your sinus feels better. Oh, clear as a bell. <laughs> At least if they make slaves out of us, we'll be healthy ones. <laughs> you know your father betrothed you to Fazwa's daughter. You cannot break his word. The girl must go back. Even if you send Patty away, she will not leave the country until she hears from me. She will not only leave, she will leave screaming. You're treating me like a child. Your father appointed me your guardian, and you must do as I say. When you learn to act like a man, I will treat you like one. Oh, place a guard with him. Oh, I don't know why I'm eating these things. They're killing me. You're scared. Everyone acts different when they're scared. Well, with me, it's talking. So if you ever hear me just talk and talk and talk and talk, you better listen, because th that's how you can tell, with me at least. Uh, other people do different things when they're scared, like, like eating or, or shivering or, or shaking, but with me it's talking. So when you hear me talk a lot, you'll know the reason why. It's because, you know something? Mm. I'm scared. Yeah. Yeah, so am I. Abu? Abu? Oh. <laughs> well, at least you can tell me whether you're Abu or not, because even in your country, people must answer when people ask questions, and, and, and I'm a people, and at least you look like a people. Silence, oh, woman! Oh, don't you dare. Don't, uh, don't you dare. <laughs> I am Abu. You're Abu? Ooh. Come here. No. These clothes are not suitable for a new member of my harem. Harem? Oh, well, I don't know how to... Say it! My slightest wish is your command. You will jump when I say jump, run when I say run, and walk when I say walk. Your only mission in life is to please me. 
That is your lot from now on. I will call for you when I want you. And do not keep me waiting! Do not try to escape. There are guards outside. <laughs> Who does he think he's talking to? Patty. Oh. Well, he better not talk to me like that. Y you know what's wrong with him? He's seen too many old Rudolph Valentino pictures. <laughs> jump when he says jump. Run when he says run. Walk when he says walk. Remember, I am your lord and master. <laughs> lord and master. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. You could say that again. Yeah, ha, ha, ha. Did you ever hear anything like that? You did, didn't you? But even though you didn't, did you? Oh, Sally, you're doing a lot of talking again. <laughs> Not because I'm scared. When I'm mad, I do a lot of talking to. And right now, I've got a mad on right up to here and twice around. Well, I'm going to fix his burnous. She cringed. She cowered. She was paralyzed with fear. Uncle, let me talk to Patty. I will tell her to go. I want to make sure the break is final. When I finish, you will never hear from her again. Patty's a sweet, gentle girl. I won't let you do this. Sit down. I will tell you when and whom to marry. And it will not be to a pale weakling of a girl. The woman approaches. How did she behave? Gentle, like a lamb. I filled the water jug as you ordered, my lord and master. Yosef, tell the musicians to play. Where shall I place the water jug, Master? You will speak only when spoken to. Place the water... there. Our clothes fit you well. May I answer that? Answer. Thank you. Extravagantly. Very good. Can I get you some grapes? Did I speak to you? Forgive me. Bring me some grapes. Our clothes fit you very well. Thank you, Master. Oh! oh, oh. <laughs> oh for, forgive me, Master. I, I, oh, I'm so sorry. Enough! Oh. Enough! Oh, but please forgive me for it's, being it's, so it's all, It is all right, uh, all right. You... Perhaps the cigarette would soothe your jangled yes. nerves. Ah! Oh! Ah! Oh, Master. Oh, oh I'm ah! so sorry. Oh, oh, I'm your sorry. behavior does not amuse me. Oh, oh, you want to be amused? Oh, come over here, Master. Sit down. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, you want to be... I'll dance for you if you want to be amused. Dance. Uh. What are you doing? I'm dancing. <laughs> what have I done? Perhaps a cigarette will help. Here you are. May I light it for you? Ow! <laughs> You're on fire. Do something. Do something. You dare do this to me? You bet I do. I may only be a miserable nothing of a woman, but you ain't seen nothing yet. What? I have a little flash for you, my not-so-very-omnipotent lord and master. When the day comes when you can get me to walk, jump, or run, just to please you, the squirrels will all swear off nuts. <laughs> Sally, Sally, you really shouldn't have done it. I'd do it again, and I'll do it again, if I ever get the chance to do it again. I'm not afraid of him. Well, who knows what he might try to do? 
I once went out with a sailor and didn't get kissed. I can handle him. Oh, uh, oh, I know, but we're out here with no one around and in the middle of the desert and... Uh, the sailor and I were in the middle of the Tunnel of Love. Oh, uh, yes, well, I think you were in worse trouble then. I... You. Leave the tent. The sheik wishes to see the young one alone. Oh, no. I'm staying right here. You! Out! Me, sis. I'm out. Yes. I'm warning you, don't come any closer. Are you the same fellow I've been having all the trouble with? I am. Uh, uh, don't come on any closer. You look... you... What happened to you? Oh, your beard. You look better without it. Oh, but don't come any closer. You may put that down now. I assure you, you have nothing to be afraid of. You just keep talking. I, I, I came to apologize for my unforgivable behavior this afternoon. I'm still listening. My purpose was... was to make you despise me. Well, if there's any doubt in your mind... You despise uh, Right me. up to the top of the despise meter. I wanted you to hate me so much that you would never wish to hear from or see Abu again. If you're not confused by what you just said, will you explain it to me? I am not Abu, Miss Lewis. Now you've got to keep talking. I am Abu's uncle, Salah Adin. Abu is truly fortunate. Someday I hope he is man enough to realize how fortunate. Well, 20, 25, 25. <laughs> now, all you have to do is to get Abba out of the way um, uh, long enough uh, so um, uh, Sally and I can escape. Escape. Uh, uh, well, no, there's, um, there's 30, um, 35 and 40. Well, oh, you don't have to hurt Abba. Oh, no. No, just knock him on the head gently. <laughs> Uh, 45, 50. I would give anything to erase the past. The fellow I had all the trouble with could have been one of the Smith brothers, as far as I'm concerned. I've never seen you before. Would you like to introduce yourself? You are too kind. I'm waiting. I beg your pardon. I have been watching you from across the dance floor all evening. May I have this dance? Well, I, I usually don't speak to strangers, but... But you look like sort of a familiar stranger. Who are you? I am Sheik Salahaddin Malouf, and you? Sally J. Truesdale. Have you been in our country long? Oh, not too long. You are as light as a feather. You must have mighty heavy feathers in your country. <laughs> so easy, you know. <laughs> 55 or 60, 60. You just, um, you know, you just uh, sneak up back of him and, and, uh, and he won't know anything about it, you know. 60, 65, and, uh, and uh, 70, and then all the rest of it's yours. Uh, 70, 70, 80, 81. We will do it. No, not until you take care of Abbo. Come with me. seem so close. It looks as if you could almost reach up and touch one. Sometimes the fates are kind. That which seems beyond reach can sometimes be touched. I've never had a past made at me in nicer language. Can you blame a man for hoping, for wishing for something so lovely, so precious, so near? So go on. <laughs> Abu! Oh, well, after we're gone and he comes to, uh, uh, thank you for the grapes. You would be happy here. 
The desert is not all heat and desolation. There is peace and quiet. Time to meditate and love. The stars glitter and shimmer like silken lamps. The warm perfume breeze caresses you gently, reverently. And there is only the stillness and you and I. What about your other wives? If I ever took other wives, we would choose them together. <laughs> that did it. You were doing fine right up until the bell. Everything was in your favor. The moon, the stars, the breeze, your beard shaved off. What did I say? If I ever choose a husband, there's only going to be one of him and one of me. But... But, but every time I see a full moon, or a bright star, or feel a soft, warm breeze, I'll think of you. And now, if you like, you can kiss me goodbye. Sally, Sally, you have nothing to be afraid of. You can relax. Sally, I didn't mean for you to relax so much. Oh, oh, Mrs. Bird, oh, what, what are you doing here? Oh, well, it, it just, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but um, I've arranged for our escape, and, 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 uh, oh, uh, I haven't I met you somewhere? Uh, I was the escape. man. Uh, How? Well, I bribed the guards to tie up Abu, Abu. Uh, uh, you, your face is familiar, really. You know, we must have met... Uh, did we meet at a masquerade party? No, madame, it Mrs. was... Mrs. Sanford, you didn't have to do that. Oh, well, uh, uh, Oh. Oh. Your face is naked. <laughs> it's Abu. Oh. Oh, you stand back, you stand back. I'll protect you, dear. Stand behind me, ladies. You have nothing more to fear. Abu! Quiet! In the years that you have been my guardian, I have done what you told me to do. I've obeyed blindly like a puppet, but now my eyes are open to what you really are. I was willing to remain a boy because I believed in your judgment and your integrity, but your actions make me realize how completely my trust was misplaced. Ladies, I will escort you back to the city. Stand aside! Today, I disciplined a boy. Tonight, I stand before a man. If, if I'm ever in the market for a lord and master, you're on the top of my list. All this mystery and secrecy, making me stay over until today. You'll find out. Hold your horses. <laughs> you know, I'm so excited. Well, how much longer? <laughs> this is it. But I thought... She'll explain for the rest of your life. I have a special deal for you today. A beautiful bracelet, five dollars. I'll take it. Four dollars, but not a penny less. I'll take it. Two dollars, but that is the bottom. Too high. Goodbye. <laughs> We'll be back with you in a minute to show you where Sally will be next week when she'll be brought to you by the Chemstrand Corporation. Don't go away, will you? No. There's something about an English castle that makes you think of the days of old. Hmm. 
dragons and duels and um, damsels in distress and knights in armor. Things were certainly different then. <laughs> Wives didn't throw their husbands' old suits away. They had them made into a building. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You'll never guess what happened to us in this castle. Well, we went to work. I was the cook and Sally was the maid, right? Right. Uh -huh. oh, I fear wore my pinkies off. I did what with polishing the pots and pans and the bric-a-brac and the riffraff. Oh, oh, I tell you. It was rubby-dub-dub, -dub, that's what it was. <laughs> well, here's how it all happened. You see, Lady Wingate invited us to visit oh, her castle. Sally, and then... Sally, no, don't tell them everything. Then they'll know. Just one more word? Oh, nothing, nothing, other word. Just one? Good night. Oh, uh, good night. Sally has been presented by Royal McBee, world's largest manufacturer of typewriters and makers of data processing equipment.